Welcome to the Anxiety Rx podcast. I am your host, Dr. Russell Kennedy. And today I want to talk about the process by which trauma gets stored in our bodies. And this is the basis of my theory that trauma basically gets locked in our bodies, it energizes itself there. And then our mind, through this process called interoception, reads the body. And the mind, being a make sense, meaning making machine, has to do something with that old alarm that's stored in our body. So it makes up all these warnings, what ifs, worst case scenarios, what I call the three W's of worry. And then we believe that worry, and then that energizes the alarm. And the alarm in our body energizes the thoughts in our mind through this process called interoception. And we get into this alarm anxiety cycle. And because most practitioners believe that anxiety is mostly a product of the mind, mostly an issue of your mind, they try and fix your mind when really the problem is more this alarm, this old unresolved trauma that's stored in your body. And that's what's causing the root cause of the, the worries. So if we just try and fix the worries, we're trying to bail water out of a boat when there's a hole in the hull. And we have to fix the hole in the hull, which is fixing the alarm, which is reconnecting with your younger self, resolving that alarm. And when you resolve that alarm, it takes the worries with it. So we have these traumas that are too, too much for our, our young mind, our child mind to bear. And I have the acronym ALARMS. So abuse, loss, abandonment, rejection, maturing too early, and shame. Those are the things that get locked in our body because they don't get processed. And if they do get processed at the time, if we have an attached and attuned caregiver, parent caregiver, we can metabolize some of those alarms. But if we don't, or worse, the parent is the cause of our alarm, that alarm gets stored in our body. And that energy radiates up through our mind and creates this alarm anxiety cycle. And we can't break out of that cycle until we know that it's a cycle. Most people think that anxiety, most practitioners think that anxiety is mostly an issue of the mind. When it's both, it's an issue of the body and the mind. So if we just treat the mind, we're not going to fix the underlying cause. And this is the reason why things like CBT and, and cognitive therapy are helpful initially because it it helps that one side of the cycle, the anxiety side of the cycle, but it doesn't do a lot to resolve the alarm. So today I want to talk about how the alarm gets in our system and what we can do about that. So when we have this abuse, loss, abandonment, rejection, anything that made you mature too early, become the man or the woman of the household too early, or anything that shamed you, specifically the big thing that shames us as children is some sort of reference to sex. I mean, if we get abused sexually, that's a big, big deal. But in general, sex carries a lot of shame to it. So that's one of the big mediators of shame in our body when we're younger is this urge for sex. And then as you get into teenage years, I see a lot of teenagers have a lot of alarm over, am I gay or not? And especially these days, because it's so fluid these days. The the sexual preference is is fluid. And I think a lot of the young kids, they are confused. There is so much uh, L LBGTQ stuff out there that they wonder, you know, am I gay? Am I bi? Whatever. And it causes them a tremendous amount of, of alarm because you can't really resolve that. There's no, yes, you are, no, you're not. I mean, it's a continuing, some continuum. Some people know that they're gay or bi or whatever, but most young people don't. I think it just, they sort of grow into it as their prefrontal cortex matures, as their brain matures, they kind of grow into this idea, okay, this is my sexual identity and this is my personal identity. So what happens is that we get a trauma when we're younger that's too much for our little minds to bear. And as a defense mechanism, Freud called it repression or suppression, that trauma gets stuffed down because we don't want to have to deal with it in our conscious mind. So it gets stuffed down into our unconscious mind. And then from the unconscious mind, because the body keeps the score and the body is a representation of the unconscious mind, that trauma gets stored in your body and it radiates from that point. And then through this process called interoception, your mind is always reading your body. And there's this old background alarm. If you read my book, you know what I mean about background alarm, alarm 
from the background of your life that's stuck there. And until we resolve that alarm, the anxiety is always going to continue. So those traumas overwhelm the child's nervous system. And the child doesn't know what to do with it. So from, from almost an evolutionary point of view, it has to push that, that energy away because it can't deal with it, doesn't understand it. And on top of that, the child blames themselves. They blame themselves for what goes on in the family because there is this saying that if you abuse, neglect, or abandon a child, the child doesn't stop loving them, the, the parent. They stop loving themselves. And I think it's really un- important to understand that we create this self shame these these jabs what i call jabs we self judgment self abandonment self blame self shame and that creates and keeps the alarm going it creates the alarm in the first place and then it just that inner critic that judgment self judgment self abandonment self blame self shame it just keeps that alarm in this suspended animation state and it actually makes it worse So you store more alarm in your system, and the more alarm you store in your system, the more your nervous system gets dysregulated, and the more you're likely to worry or go into OCD or even get overwhelmed and go into dorsal vagal shutdown where you start becoming depressed. So the child, when they're younger, will start making worries that are consistent with this alarm that's stored in their body. And on top of that, that alarm gets worse with the worries. And it gets worse with that inner critic, with the judgment, abandonment, blame, and shame. So we have this, it's like the Roach Motel. If you ever heard those those commercials in the 80s about roaches check in, but they don't check out. Alarm goes in, but it doesn't come out. There's no way that that child, especially if the trauma continues, especially if the lack of connection with a parent continues when you're a child, that alarm keeps getting put in there and nothing really comes out. So this is what creates this, what I call the alarm anxiety cycle. So alarm in the body creates these anxious worries of the mind, warnings, what ifs, worst case scenarios. And these three W's of worry energize the alarm and you get locked into that and we don't get out of it because we don't realize that the body, the alarm has a significant amount to do with this thing we call anxiety. So if we don't heal the alarm, we don't heal the anxiety. We can suppress the anxiety in a way by learning to think better, positive thoughts, that kind of thing, affirmations. Yeah, that will help. But unless you go back and find that child and connect with them again and reprocess and and reduce and resolve that alarm, you're always going to be anxious. It's never going to heal because you're not healing the root cause of the problem. Again, you're bailing water out of the boat. The water is kind of like the worries. You bail it out and it makes you feel temporarily a little bit better because you're bailing water out of the boat, but you're not really dealing any, you're doing anything for the underlying cause. That hole is still in the hull of the boat. That alarm is still coming in. So how do we heal that alarm? Well, we reconnect with ourselves. We find the alarm in our body first. And this is what the MBRX program is designed to do. It's help you to find that alarm in your body rather than get stuck in your head all the time with worries. Cause that's an endless cycle. Like you will never break that cycle as long as you're stuck in your head. Because if the, if the underlying root cause of this anxiety that you have is this alarm in your body, you're never going to actually put a dent in it. If you're always up in your head. You're not actually dealing with the root cause, which is why talk therapy and that kind of thing helps in the short term, but it doesn't really heal anything in the long term. Anxiety fundamentally is a separation of your mind and your body and your adult self from your child self. The adult doesn't want to go back and visit the child because the child holds all our pain and the pain and the child looks at the adult like, why are you ignoring me? I'm here. And the child... (laughs) makes this alarm so much worse to try and get the adult's attention. But unfortunately, the adult feels that alarm worsening and pushes the child away even more. So that's why anxiety and alarm is such a difficult thing to treat until you know what the root cause of it is, which is fundamental disconnect between your mind and your body and between the child self and the adult self. So again, this is what MBRX, my my program, Your Mind-Body Prescription for Permanent Anxiety Healing, 
that's what it addresses. It addresses the adult child separation and the mind body separation so that you can start resolving this alarm in your body. But until you understand that your anxiety is actually not coming so much from your thoughts as this alarm, this old unresolved wounding that's still stuck in you, you'll never heal it. So how do we deal with it? Well, one of the things I do is I get people to find the alarm in their body. And there's one of my old podcasts tells you exactly how to do this. So I'm not going to go into that today, but basically it's thinking of something that causes you a lot of worry, a lot of scares you, and then scanning your body and seeing where it shows up. For me, it's in my solar plexus. It's this hot purple fist shaped, fist sized entity in my solar plexus that pushes up into my heart and my spine. And that's the root cause of my anxiety. And I saw this when I was on LSD, and this is what I write about in the book, Anxiety Rx, is this is how I found that anxiety was actually not in my mind. I was chasing my tail for 25 years in therapy when it was actually in my body. And once I started seeing that alarm in my body as my wounded younger self, as woo-woo and, and kind of ethereal as that sounds, until I, until I saw that that alarm was actually the younger version of me was rusty asking for my attention to be seen heard loved and protected and understood which is kind of what i talked about in a podcast a couple of weeks ago the should see hear be open to understand love and defend until you do that to that younger version of you you can't process the alarm and if you can't process the alarm it's always going to radiate up into your mind and create this anxiety so I think it's really important to understand that we get a trauma that's too much for us to bear as a child. It gets stuffed down from our unconscious, from our conscious to our unconscious. And from the unconscious, it gets stored in our body. And we have to find that alarm that's stored in our body. And maybe it's in your throat, maybe it's in your heart, maybe it's in your solar plexus like me. Put your hand over it, breathe into it, really allow it to be there. And there's this mantra i use called sensation without explanation which is just allowing the pain putting your hand over it sort of saying to this younger version of you hey i'm here i am here with you and i'm here for you i am here to help you connect and help me become whole because what anxiety really is is this collection of disparate parts disparate child parts in our system that haven't been resolved so when we resolve that disparate disconnected child we can become whole again and when we're whole we can handle things we don't have to default into worry because worry is a coping strategy it's an addiction it's a way of avoiding the pain in our body by going up into our heads so what we do when we heal it at its source when we go and actually find the alarm in our body and this is what mbrx does find your alarm in your body Maybe use something like a yoga nidra meditation to help bring your adult self and child self together and your mind and your body together. Then we start creating this fertile ground of, of growth rather than this compulsive protection that we've been in since we were children. And once we get into the sense of growth and connection and resolving this disparation, it's not really a word, but I, I like it, disparation, which is basically parts of you that are all separate. And then you bring them back together into a functional whole again. And you bring your adult self and your child self back together. That child knows that they're seen, heard, loved, understood, open to, and protected. Then we start to heal the root cause of anxiety. Otherwise, we're always just chasing our tails, trying to fix our thoughts. Because you will think exactly the way you feel. So if you feel alarmed, you will think alarmed. And it takes a tremendous amount of energy to be able to think in opposition to how you feel. You can do it, but it takes a lot of work. So at its core, when we bury this alarm in our system, we have to unbury it. We have to find it, which is the, basically the root cause of our younger self. We connect with that pain. We connect with that alarm because that is the child in us. And when we show that child that they're seen, heard, loved, and protected, they can kind of come out and reconnect with us because a lot of times as children, we block ourselves off from love because love we perceived wasn't safe when we were younger. So it's regaining that sense of love and connection for your younger self that actually heals you. As a woo as that sounds, I know it sounds ethereal, 
but it's the only thing after 25, 30 years of therapy that actually made a, a huge difference in my anxiety and what allowed me to write the book and what allowed me to create the program is just this sense that I have to become whole again. I can't just sit in my worries all day, even though it has a temporary relieving effect of separating me from that old pain in my body from my younger self. It's temporary and it will always come back. It will always come back unless you actually find the root cause of it, which is this younger wounded child that had this alarms, these alarms, abuse, loss, abandonment, rejection, had to mature too early or shame that got put into their system that wasn't processed, that got stuffed into their body. And from that point, it's created this anxiety for the rest of your life. So we have to go back, find that child, heal the alarm in their body, which heals the alarm in your body, which resolves the anxiety. And that's it for this week. We'll see you next week. Thanks.